Well, hello everyone. Today I am going to uh, talk about Remembrance Day, which is the 11th of November. But I will be doing some calligraphy. Don't you worry. Oh well, it's a beautiful bright day and today I am going to go down to the park in town where the memorial service took place on Sunday, the 11th of November, which is Armistice Day, Poppy Day, Remembrance Day, was Tuesday, but the nearest Sunday was uh, last Sunday. And there would have been a huge crowd down there, local dignitaries, we have an army camp nearby, a small one, and um, they will have had a lot of people there as well. So I'm just going to make my way down there to give some sort of atmosphere about what I want to talk about. Okay? Well, it was in 1918, of course, that the First World War ended, and from that day on, we have remembered the victims of war with Poppy Day or Armistice Day on the 11th of November and uh, observed two minute silence which is all well and good and that's uh, quite right too it was a terrible thing that millions of people died on Sunday here in Nuneaton there was quite a gathering of people and uh, let's just go over to where that happened And it just so happens there's a group of school children there as well. Well, here I am at Nuneaton's Riversley Park, and this is the War Memorial, where on Sunday they held the ceremony for the uh, Remembrance Day. And uh, places like this and events like that took place all over Britain, and no doubt in other countries as well, remembering the victims of war from those uh, terrible wars of the First World War and the Second. But there's a particular story that uh, caught my attention a few years ago when I saw a picture of two young men in a big house in Huddersfield. Uh, the house was uh, owned by a fairly powerful, rich industrialist. And his two sons, who were in their 20s, were sent to or volunteered to go in the army and were killed. One in the Battle of the Somme in 1916 and the other one in 1918, just before the end of the war. And the tragedy was these two young officers were just wasted away. And the tragedy of it just struck me very, very deeply. For just one day of the year, we seem to spend a lot of time mourning the death of all these people. And yet for 365 days of the year, we don't seem to be bothered about how we could possibly make it that the wars don't happen. Now, I was born in 1951, which is just after the war. Both my grandfather on my father's side and my father were in the forces during the First World War and the Second World War. Needless to say, they survived, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Um, but I fortunately had no experience of war directly myself. Now, I have two sons who were born in the 80s and late 70s, and they too haven't been required to go to war which is a wonderful thing of course and so when I look at all these names and think of these people that have been in war and were victims of war and died in the war um, you, I've only got to think well you know what can we do about it well this is one of the reasons that I'm a follower of, of the Baha'i faith because Baha'u'llah has a message for mankind to establish world peace that sounds a bit grand, I know, but it needs looking into. And so many of the things we have today, we take for granted. The technology that we have, that I think it's all part of a plan that we've got to be engaged in. And part of that is this calligraphy I'm going to do.
And now for the calligraphy, as I promised. And uh, I'm going to do a quote from Baha'u'llah, and it is, The earth is but one country, and mankind its citizens. I could have done another one, but that's a bit too big for what I want to get on. And that is, the well-being of mankind, its peace and security are unattainable unless and until its unity is firmly established. So these are both quotes which hopefully would make the world a better place if we were only more unified as a human race on this planet. Which is a concept, I have to say, is almost universally accepted. So many of the great organisations uh, have unity in diversity as their watchword. So, anyway. Right, let's crack on then. Um, I'm going to do this on some watercolour paper, uh, which is about this big. And I'm going to put a frame around it. And, uh, but before I do anything on that, I'm going to colour this with some watercolour paint, let it dribble down, which will be good fun. Before I do, and then I'm going to mark the lettering on with a, a Sharpie. One of the best uh, exports from America I know of. But before we do any of that, um, this is one of my best shirts, I hope you like it. And it's got to go, I'm not doing any artwork with this on, so. Right, ready to go. <clears throat> Let's get on with it. Right, the first thing I'm going to do is to wet this paper right from the top to the bottom. You'll see the, the frame just fits in there. So I'm just going to wet everything first. With, and make sure you cover all the paper. I want it to run down <clears throat> and the top up here will be the bottom. I'll turn it upside down when I've finished. Right now the fun starts. Whoa, lovely. And a bit of, oh, blimey, look at that. Don't want it too dark, I want it light-ish so that the black will show up on it and then it's simply a matter I'm going to put some yellow in of letting the water do its work make sure it's all covered and then wait for it to dry. But I'm only going to wait so long because <clears throat> don't do it too soon because you want it to, to move around and drip down the page. So once it's looked like it's done, it's much as it's going to do, dry it because once you've dried it, it won't move again. Right, before I start, I'm going to just test out on this bit of paper one or two of the ideas. For instance, here we go, E, A, and, and D. So the E and the A both have a crossbar, so if you pull them together, it works quite well. This paper is lovely for the pull on the pen, it works very well. And here's another link we can make. See that the vertical there of the N can become part of the D. So and maybe don't take that so far. What was the last one? The so if we do that looks like the. It's just another way of doing the lettering. And we'll do that all the way through. That is the top, but now it's going to be the bottom. So I'm going to do the whole thing this way round. A mark there which is interesting. Right, the earth is but one country and in mankind its citizens. Right, oh by the way, I have tried it once before and it wasn't all that good, so I'm gonna try again. Here we go.
If you do the outer like that, it's quite easy to do and you can get very consistent, but like ones with the O, they're difficult to get. So do it simple like that. There's a join. Country, there's not a lot you can change, so I'm just going to do that. Same. First, but one country I'm unkind, it's just a sit. E. Leave that for a moment. Then you can decide where it's going to go. I'll put Baha'u'llah here. if you didn't know how to spell Baha'u'llah. Right, I'm just going to change that bit up there. And possibly that. Um, otherwise, I think that's okay. Um, I'm just going to put a dot after and between, but just to add a bit of decoration to it. And basically that's it. Now the left one is the easy bit. Pop that on. And that, my friends, is the finished article. Well, there you have it. Um, thanks for watching. Oh, I better sign up with a decent shirt. And there's the piece, all done. And yeah, I hope you like that. Uh, I do um, comment below and uh, don't forget to subscribe i'm creeping up i've got a few more subscribers that's great news and don't forget when you come to that bell give it a a ding oh yes thank you very much for watching i will see you again in the next video bye for now now then where was i <sighs>